Tamara Vrooman once planned to complete a PhD in history. However, her avid interest in public policy matters called her to public service and a career in government where the decisions are actually made. When the private sector approached her, she decided it was a new opportunity not to be passed up. So, how is running the Ministry of Finance like running a bank with a social conscience? We're about to find out. It is my pleasure to welcome Tamara Bruman, CEO of Van City Credit Union, to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thanks very much, Fanny. Very nice to be here. And that is a big question. It is. What is the difference uh, for you? Uh -huh. uh, running the Ministry of Finance in British Columbia yeah. and running a credit union, the yeah. largest credit union in Canada. Yeah, so I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time in the Ministry of Finance. I think, you know, sometimes the public uh, doesn't have the full insight into what public servants actually do. Mm -hmm. And if you do things well, you know, you have the ability to actually positively influence the lives of four million people. Uh, so it's pretty important mm. work. But sometimes it can take a while to get things done. No? I'm sure. And watch over <laughs> a great big budget. A great big budget. How many billion? Uh, at the time it was 42 billion. 42 billion. Yep, Were you right. good in math? Uh, I actually was always pretty good in math, um, but it wasn't my passion. Uh, my passion was uh, actually more people than math. That's interesting because yeah. I asked former finance minister yeah. Carol Taylor yeah. that exact question yeah. when yeah. she was on the show. And she said, yeah, I was pretty good in math, yeah. but it wasn't necessarily her passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it isn't what uh, directing finance is all about necessarily, math. No, you have to be good at math, obviously, but it, but mm -hmm. it's really about how you allocate re resources for the future. Sure. Right? So what happened to the history dream? What happened to the history dream? Well, the history dream, I, I like history because I think it's interesting mm -hmm. to know, you know, where we've come from and, and who we are. Um, but but I, I studied a lot about the decisions that were made by governments. And I, I didn't want to study them after the fact. I think I really wanted mm -hmm. to go where the decisions were made in the first place because I was mm -hmm. curious. You know, how yeah. could people make the kind of decisions? Exactly that they where make? the real power yeah, is. Absolutely. And people love you or hate you, pretty much, or they <laughs> they like you or <laughs> dislike right. you, all of that, or like That's your right. decision or That's dislike right. your decision. Mm -hmm. right. First job in public service for you? Born in Kamloops, right? Born in Cam uh, no, actually born in Victoria, but born raised in Victoria. In, raised in Kamloops. Okay, went yep. to University of Victoria. Went to University and first of Victoria. job in public service was mailroom or something. Pretty close. It was a. They had to create a new job classification, Fanny, because there wasn't one junior enough uh, to bring me in. So I was a uh, junior, junior research officer in finance in the, uh, in the Ministry of Aboriginal Affairs. And as you worked your way up mm -hmm. to Deputy Minister, I think you were in health. Yes, I at was. At some point, yeah. Deputy Minister yeah. of Health. Yeah. Uh, people who don't know how government works, yeah. what does it mean, Deputy Minister? Uh, new, uh, new politician comes in, election. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you get a new minister. You do. What's your job? Your job is to really sit down and brief the minister, right? Mm -hmm. So when the public delivers um, a government uh, to us, it, they come from all walks of life. You might have a nurse, you might have a grocery store owner, you might have a teacher, you might have uh, somebody who'd been a stay-at-home uh, mom mm -hmm. before sure. they become the minister of, of whatever, or maybe even the minister of finance. So your job is to really bring them up to speed to tell them where things are at, to help them with the scope of their role, mm -hmm. uh, and to provide advice, and then to execute their direction. So nicely said. Some people would say the bureaucrats run the province, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. But it's true. If you're a minister, you need somebody yeah, to uh, right. catch you up every single day. That's right. And when you go into the scrum, you need to know what you're talking about. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to understand it somewhat. Right. And to be credible, right? The public yeah. wants public wants uh, elected officials and politicians that know what they're talking about, that are mm -hmm. clear in how they mm -hmm. talk about complex things, and uh, and can engage them. And that's, I'm so that's sure. A is it a 24/7 job, pretty much? It pretty much is. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, were you sitting in your office when Van City called? Did they call you? You call them? What happened? Yep, they called me, uh, and I s definitely wasn't uh, looking. I really liked the work I was doing. Loved working with Carol Taylor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we were doing good work in the interest of the province, but they called and I said I wasn't interested. And then that fateful, well, just come for one meeting uh, suggestion happened, and, and I did, and the rest is history. Mm. And what changed your mind what, in the meeting? What changed my mind in the meeting was I, uh, uh, I thought, well, I'll tell them 
how, uh, how I think business should really behave. That if, uh, you know, making money is obviously a very important part of business, but if you're not doing it with an eye to the people you serve and improving the community from which you draw your business, then I think you're only doing half the job. And from my position in government, I saw a lot of businesses that would always ask government to do things. And I thought, well, why are you asking government to do things? You know, mm -hmm. you have all the tools, you have all the smarts, you have, why aren't you contributing more to this debate? and to the strength of our community. And I thought that'd be the last meeting with them. I thought they'd say, oh, well, forget about that. Uh, <laughs> right. But they said, oh, that's exactly She's what we think, too. She's too philosophical. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so they, invited me, uh, they invited me to join. First day on the job, what didn't you know about <laughs> perhaps the private sector? But that's not a very good question. Uh, the credit union, the, the, the uh, mood, the feeling, what it was. And the real question is, what's the difference between a bank and a credit union? Yeah, the, the real difference between a bank and a credit union is, uh, is a credit union, uh, we're owned by the people we serve. So if you're a member of the credit union, you're also an owner, so our accountability and our service is, is just to you. If, if we're in a bank, you know, my mom worked for a bank, she still does. Really? I worked for a bank, that's so right. It's my in the whole, it is in the jeans, my whole life. And you know, she'd come home and she'd say, I really wanted to help this, this customer, and, and she'd do her best, just like we do. But the customer knew and she knew that there was a third party, an invisible third party in the room, and that was a shareholder. Mm -hmm. And that shareholder was going to demand a cut and a say in however that business transaction was uh, conducted. So they're not able to be, I don't think, as flexible as we are. They're not able to be as connected on the ground as we are. Uh, and uh, I think as a result, we're a little more innovative, uh, definitely more uh, connected, and uh, that really resonates with, uh, with our members. Any idea who started credit unions when they began? Yeah, they, 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 started, they started actually uh, uh, out east. Uh, the founder of, uh, of Desjardins was one of the early mm -hmm. uh, cooperative leaders. And cooperatives really came out of a time when uh, here and in Europe and Africa and elsewhere in the world, we really had major change from the industrial time to the more modern time. And local people, just like we're seeing around the world, are saying, well, we want to say in how our companies are run. We want to come together. In our own case, uh, Van City was started in 1946 with 22 people who each contributed $14 uh, to start the credit union. And they were all people who lived east of Main Street. And at that time in 1946, you know, you couldn't get a mortgage from a mm -hmm. bank if you lived east of Main right. Street because the banks true. didn't think that they would be worth anything. Well, and sometimes when you lived west of Main Street, you couldn't get a <laughs> yeah, mortgage, that's right. depending on <laughs> oh, your circumstances. That's but right. uh, are you telling me, in a sense, it's a profit sharing situation or what? Um, we're definitely a for profit business. We capitalize our business with. Uh, uh, in the same way that, that, that most people capitalize their own finances, mm -hmm. you know, the old-fashioned way, by saving it year after year after right. year. So the excesses from our business are, are, are saved as capital, and that's how we, uh, that's how we run our business. So, uh, as, as you know, banks have the reputation of being the fat cats and yeah. the uh, deeply bloated yeah. uh, institutions. In Canada, a little more uh, regulated, yep. a little more solid than in the good old USA. Mm -hmm. And what about credit unions here and in the USA? Same regulations? No. Are there credit unions in the United States? What? Yeah, there are credit unions in the United States. Quite different, Fanny, than the credit unions uh, here in Canada. They're more limited in where they can, what they can do and what mm. they can't do. They have preferred tax status, so they're very, very um, uh, limited in how far they can reach, what kind of obligations they can take on. So they tend to be quite small and quite fragmented. Well, you know how much trouble we're having in the good old USA, and yes. I can say we because I used to live yeah, there with yeah. the health care yeah. <laughs> and the, that word, yeah. that socialism that, word, and I'm sure when, and even the co-op word right. in the Midwest is a tough one. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, and also uh, in parts of the South, too. But certainly credit unions, we see credit unions doing great things in uh, the western U.S. They've been very innovative around environmental lending, really important in Hispanic and immigrant communities. Uh, a lot of uh, folks in the U.S. Uh, don't have bank accounts. It's not the same as in Canada, where most people have a bank account regardless of circumstances. Right. And is there something I can't uh, get at a credit union, a T-bill, a, a, a tax-free savings, something that I can get at the traditional bank, I can't get at the credit union? I don't think so. And I think there's more that you can get at the credit union in some ways than, uh, than there is uh, 
than there is uh, at the bank. So yeah, we offer all services. You know, we we have a uh, wealth counseling firm for mm -hmm. people who have particular wealth management needs. We have foreign exchange. We have commercial lines. We do multi-unit high-rise mm -hmm. finance construction. We have okay. venture capital. So how are you affected when we have a subprime meltdown and the U.S. has a subprime meltdown economy faltering, perhaps going up today, not sure? Yeah. Uh, how does that affect you as opposed to a bank or any differently? Yeah, so Wall I think Wall Street that, goes a little crazy. Right. We did, we did quite well through, uh, through the crisis because, uh, you, you know, our assets are tied to our local economy. Mm -hmm. So unlike a bank that is invested uh, in multi, multi uh, jurisdictions in terms of how they capitalize their business, uh, we're local. So we rise and fall with the fortunes uh, of our communities, uh, of our members, and of our local economy. So we're, we did quite well through, uh, through the Okay, transition. and globally, where do you fit in? I know you belong to a global organization. Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, the acronym is not sure, you tell me. The Global Alliance for Banking on Values. Yes. yes. Which means? Yeah, the Global Alliance for Banking on Values is a network of uh, 14 of the world's most sustainable banks, representing everywhere from the Netherlands to South America mm -hmm. to Bangladesh to the United States to Canada. And what we commit to is that we put the needs and the interests of, uh, of people first, uh, and we do the right thing for communities, we're environmentally sustainable, and the profitability follows. So we sure. just released a study uh, comparing uh, the Global Alliance Bank. It was funded by the Rockefeller Foundation out of New York, mm. uh, comparing our, us, our members, with uh, what they call the 29 uh, world's most important sustainable financial institutions by the Financial Stability Board, which is the uh, board that Mark Carney, our governor of the mm -hmm. Bank of Canada, now chairs. So there's not one Canadian bank on that list because they're too small. So these are the big behemoths, really? you know, the, the too big mm -hmm. to fails. We compared our financial performance from 2007 to 2011 with theirs. And the sustainable banks outperform them in every single category. So what about books like the Too Big to Fail mm -hmm. and uh, The Big Short or The Little Short or whatever <laughs> The Great was. Short, yeah. The yeah. Great Short. Yeah. Uh, do you read them? Do you pay close attention uh, to them? I read a lot. I like I to bet read. You do. Yeah, so uh, so I definitely read uh, uh, read all of those uh, read all of those things, and I think it's an interesting time to be in finance. You know, you used to go to a cocktail party, and mm -hmm. people found out that you're in finance. It was a bit of a snoozer. They maybe asked you about their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Now there's real literacy. You know, what's going on in Greece, Tamara? Can you tell me how to arbitrate? So people are interested, and I think there's greater literacy, and with that will come greater accountability. Sure, because we hear in the street that the euro crisis is definitely affecting us too. It is. And if Greek, yeah. Greece goes broke, we'll be affected. We will. All of that. And yeah. how so? Yeah, how so? So so if ever there was a time when finance was not connected internationally, mm -hmm. uh, it certainly is now. And the one thing that moves faster than anything in the world today is money. And so we are all interconnected, just like we are uh, in a telecommunication sense, we are in finance as well. And so we have... We have investments. Our banks have investments in investments in, and our governments do, in uh, in Europe. And uh, when they go, you know, just like your mm -hmm. own portfolio, if you take a loss, you take a loss. Ooh, I have been doing <laughs> that occasionally. <laughs> Tamara Bruman, our guest. She is the uh, head of Van City Credit Union, the largest credit union in Canada. We'll come back.